Accusations of abuse have trailed R. Kelly since he married rising singing star Aaliyah back in 1994 when she was just 15 years old and he was 27. Yesterday, the multiple Grammy and Billboard Award winner was sentenced to 30 years in prison for sex trafficking and racketeering after dozens of women had come forward over dozens of years accusing him of abusing them sexually and holding them against their will. Bill Cosby released from jail almost a year ago on a sexual assault conviction because of deal discrepancies between two sets of district attorneys and a string of inappropriate witnesses was just found liable in a civil case. Jurors just awarded $500,000 to a woman who claimed he sexually assaulted her when she was a teen back in the 70s. And Johnny Depp awarded $15 million earlier this month as a jury found that all three of his defamation claims against his ex-wife Amber Heard were valid. Those claims about domestic violence. Beth Hassett, CEO of Weave, joining me now live. Weave stands for when everyone acts, violence ends. And Beth, I have to ask you, people have been trying to take action against R. Kelly for alleged violence for decades. He has now been sentenced for all the courage that may give the local victims of non-celebrities. When Bill Cosby was released last year after his very famous conviction, a lot of victims lost faith in the system. Are you concern they're thinking today oh this sentence against r kelly won't really stick either you know i think this really gives people hope it shows that if you're persistent if you keep telling the truth and telling your truthful story that people will be held accountable and in this case he has a long history of being a predator and exploiting young girls and I think people are feeling a sense of relief and hope for the future that more predators will be held accountable and that their cases too might um, be resolved. Going back to actor and comedian Bill Cosby, once America's favorite dad, he was once released on criminal charges but was found civilly liable for sex assault. Civilly liable. Is that a route that maybe more alleged victims should consider? You know, it's a really rare thing, and it's amazing that um, that she got this this result from that trial because very few people um, make it through the civil courts with um, with a rape claim. So I think I think this is great for victims everywhere, and it is a route that some folks can go if the criminal route doesn't work. Um, but you know, the criminal criminal charges against a rapist are going to continue to be our best tool as a society. For weeks and weeks, Johnny Depp's defamation suit against his ex-wife Amber Heard monopolized headlines. Both had their say. In the end, though, jurors believe Depp's account of the couple's action, not Heard. The system is supposed to let both sides have their say. Jurors are supposed to evaluate and decide what they believe is true. Since losing this case, Heard has said that the verdict was a, quote, setback for women and that she was being silenced as a survivor of domestic violence. Depp claimed and put forward evidence that he'd been attacked several times by her so the jury believed he was a victim of domestic violence with this case getting so much attention what impact do you see it having locally you know I think there there's good and bad to this case I think the good in it is that there are a lot of couples that just have a highly volatile relationship and there isn't a clear perpetrator of domestic violence. There isn't a pattern of domestic violence. So I think that's something for us to learn from. Um, you know, not, not every relationship looks the same. However, I do worry that um, especially victims who are in a relationship where there's a huge power Russian imbalance, bread, where, um, where their perpetrator has a lot more... Um, power in the relationship, perhaps perceived power in the community, that it could silence somebody from speaking up, fearing that they're not going to be believed. You know, these cases always affect affect the people paying attention. And this one got a lot of attention and a lot of chatter. And I don't think chatter is bad. It gets people talking and it gets people curious about relationships and what they really look like. So, you know, that's the positive part of that. Okay. Um, we we're talking about defamation in that particular case between Depp and Heard writing about a situation in a local paper or blog versus filing a report, a documented claim or accusation. What would you say to victims as they try to get their voices heard? Because it may seem to someone, I'm going to write this on this blog, you know, before maybe they've spoken to one of your counselors or gone to the police. What would you say to somebody about that? 
you know, we see that a lot with people trying to out their um, perpetrator on social media, for instance, or sending us messages on our message boards. And that's not your best, best approach. You know, documenting the violence, documenting what really happened in the relationship, seeking assistance either through the criminal legal system or getting, getting counseling is always going to be more effective than, you know, posting something on the internet that could be misinterpreted and ultimately could end up hurting you in the long run if, if you do end up going to trial as it did to Amber Heard in this case. And Weave has people available that can help walk someone through that process of making the report and where they need to go and kind of all the bases that they need to, to hit. I think that's one of the best things we can do. If you call our support and information line, or we also have live chat, um, we can guide you through just understanding what your options are. I mean, it's always up to the victim to make a choice about what they do, but it's good to know, wow, if I do that, it could help. It could hurt my case in the future if I'm trying to get a restraining order or custody, custody of my children. It's, you know, knowledge is power and we're happy to help people look at things from all different sides and make the best choice for themselves. And what are you saying to the people calling you for help today whose biggest concern is nobody's gonna believe me? You know, we always start with believing survivors and we tell them that. I think it's important to tell, even if it's a neighbor of yours or you know somebody, somebody divulging to you what's going on for them, tell them that you believe them because that is one of the main reasons people stay silent. And they need to understand that we know this happens. We believe that the story they're telling us is true and that there's help for them to get past either the pain, current pain or past pain, or to make choices to move forward. And perhaps as in some of these cases, actually find some justice. Beth Hassett, CEO of Weave When Everyone Acts, Violence Ends. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you or someone you know need help dealing with the situation of domestic violence, you can call Weave at 916-920-2952. That's at the bottom of your screen right now. Again, 916-920-2952.